All right, guys. Let's talk about this. Uh, let's name our, some perfect squares. So what is a perfect square to begin with? Someone tell us. What is a perfect square? Why is four a perfect square? Say it again. Who said it? Because two times two is four. Okay. Yeah. Something's called a perfect square because it's the perfect square. So like if I have a perfect square, it's like this. Okay, pretend that's a perfect square. Yeah, I think it's pretty good. I think I, I did fairly decent. But two times two, right? And when I square this, it makes four. That's what a perfect square is, right? Squares, the sides of a square. That's it. All right. And the sides of the squares have to be the same. Yeah. So what are my other perfect squares? We got nine. I heard that. What else? 16. 64, 36, 81, 49, 100, 144, huh? 121, 225, that's a good one. One, yes, one, one. Good job, huh? What else? 169. All right. So we're getting the, the gist of what a perfect square is, right? Yeah. We're all good. All right. So we're going to be focusing on if my A and my C are both perfect squares, there is a shortcut. All right. That's what we're focusing on right now. Okay. It's called the perfect square trinomial. If your A and your C are perfect squares, then all you have to do is find their square roots. And then you're either adding or subtracting. Whether you're adding or subtracting depends on the value of your B term. Mm -mm. It has to be plus, plus, minus, plus. Okay, reason why it has to be plus, plus, or minus, plus is positives, right? Um, a negative times a negative is gonna always produce a positive, okay? So your, your C term has to always be positive because it's the only way it's gonna happen. A negative times a negative makes a positive. Um, so, yeah. But, yeah, again, this is just a shortcut. Do Does that mean forget about the box method? No. No, it means that, oh, if I notice this, then I don't have to do the box method. Does that make sense? Okay. So here we go. So notice here we have 4x squared plus 24x plus 36. And I'm like, oh, my gosh, look, A. A is 4x squared. 4x squared is a perfect square. OMG, C is 36. Oh my gosh, 36 is a perfect square. And you're like, oh, well, cool. What does that become? It becomes 2x because that's the square root of 4x squared. Agree? This becomes 6 squared because that's the square root of 6 is the square root of 36. And because they are perfect squares and my B is what? 24x and it's positive, right? Mm -hmm. My factor is just going to be 2x plus 6 squared. Mm -hmm. Your b turns out to be 5. Your b is going to equal double 2x times 6. It's going to work out. Anyway, that's it. That's the answer. That's it. That's the shortcut. All right, Let, are you ready to do one? Okay, your turn. If it can make a square, if the sides, like if you can have sides of a square. No, it could be anything like one by one, a two by two, a three by three, a four by four, a five by five. Any number. 
long as you have it square. So like 20 times 20 would be 400. I think that's the square part. Mm. Nope. All right, ready to check? All right, so my A term, it's 64x squared. Is that a perfect square? Yes, it can become 8x, agree? My C term is one and it becomes what? One squared, it's one. So there, my A and my B are, my A and my C are perfect. So therefore my factor is just 8x. Why is it minus? Because my B is negative, right? Minus one squared. Now, again, if all this fails and you forget, go back to your box. What multiplies to give you 64x squared, but adds to give you negative 16. <gasps> oh my gosh. Eight and eight, you don't say. Yes, you do. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. But this is just a little shortcut. So if you notice that A and C are perfect, then you save yourself some time. Does that make sense? Got it? All right. Are we ready for bingo? It's negative because your middle term is negative. Your middle term term is whether it's positive or negative. What do you think you get from the 